For two days now, tensions have been very high at the Namanga border with Tanzania, between Kenya and Tanzania. Youths on the Kenyan side have blocked the road, they've burnt tires on the road, they've been demonstrating very emotionally protesting against the government of Tanzania, our neighbors. Now, this is not the first time here yeah, in recent times that there's been tension at the border with Tanzania. There have been several incidences, but I believe this is at least the second major incident with Tanzania. Yeah, since that country got a new president, whom Kenyans love very much, a man called John Pombe Magufuli. Now, for us to fully understand what these tensions are all about, I will have to do something that I've been very reluctant to do. Indeed, something that I've really been resisting to do. And that is to discuss Tanzanian politics. I have very many Tanzanian friends. And some of my Tanzanian friends know who I am. And one or two of them have approached me and told me, Chris, one, say something about Tanzania. Yeah? Tell the world what's happening. And this pressure did not start yesterday. Indeed, it started in the days I was running only the blog. There was no YouTube channel. And once or twice, I succumbed to that pressure and I wrote a few things about Tanzania. And I always regretted. Why? Why this reluctance? Well, you can call me old-fashioned. You can say I'm wrong. But I believe only a local person can speak authoritatively, truthfully, and sincerely about their country. Can you imagine somebody else, a foreigner, a non-Kenyan, coming to run the Kumekucha YouTube channel? Even if they have lived in Kenya all their lives, they would not be able to quite get it. That is my view, and I could be wrong. Now, I found it uh, very important for me to give you that background because I'm about to speak something about Tanzanian politics. And the reason is, I'm feeling this time I'm feeling a little justified. Why am I feeling justified? Because Tanzanian politics has clearly poured over and affected its neighbors, Kenya. What is going on at our neighboring country has now started to touch Kenyans within Kenya. And as regulars of this channel will know, I like being thorough. When I discuss about an issue, I try my best to make sure I leave no doubts. I try my very best to give you as much information as possible so that you get a complete picture. But first, let us start with this latest incident and find out exactly what happened. Last Saturday, some Kenyan traders drove into Tanzania to sell milk. They were doing the usual run selling milk in Tanzania at a village not very far from the border. They were arrested for doing business in Tanzania without a business license. To do business in Tanzania. Now one of those traders managed to escape from the police and they sped back to Kenya in their Probox car yeah, and uh, they probably thought they were safe. But at least one Tanzanian police officer pursued them into Kenya with the aim of rearresting them and returning them to Tanzania to take them to court. Now, this policeman was attacked by angry Morans. You know, the locals are Morans in that area, Masais. And in the fracas, he was injured. In fact, he had to be taken to hospital for treatment. But he was released and went back to Tanzania. And Kenyan authorities handed over this person who had been arrested to Tanzania in Tanzania back to the Tanzanians. Now, the next day, somebody started spreading a malicious rumor that actually one of the people arrested by the Tanzanian authorities had died in police custody. Now, anybody who knows Tanzania as well as I do, yeah, would quickly dismiss such a story yeah, as not being true. And indeed, it turned out not to be true. At least, according to authorities in Kenya and one of my sources in Tanzania. But this is what triggered some very serious manenos at the border. Now of great interest to us and very relevant to what we're discussing is what these protesters were saying. They were saying Tanzanians come to do business in Kenya. 
Nobody asks them for a business license or a business permit. They operate freely, without harassment. However, when Kenyans go, Kenyans go into Tanzania to trade, they have problems. Indeed, they've been having a lot of problems for a very long time. Now folks, I'm afraid that is 100% true. Now I need to tell you about an incident last year yeah, that will confirm this story. Yeah? Somebody approached me, a Kenyan, who had a very harrowing experience at the Horohoro border with Tanzania. That's the border you go through Lunga Lunga, which you know is in Kuali district. So assuming you're in Mombasa and you want to get to Tanzania, the shortest route is through the border in Lunga Lunga, through to Horohoro in Tanzania. Yeah, the Kenyan side of the border is Lunga Lunga, and uh, the Tanzanian side is Horo Horo. This is what happened. He had gone into to Dar es Salaam for a brief holiday. You will remember that at that time tensions were very high in Kenya. Nobody knew what was going to happen next. So he decided to take his family into Tanzania. Being a businessman, he also decided that while he's in Tanzania, instead of wasting his time, he will try and do some research. Not business, just some research to see into the possibilities of setting up a business in Tanzania, a branch of his Kenyan company. Now, while in Tanzania, he decided to come back. Yeah, those are technicality to this bank. He had to come back and uh, sort out the issue concerning cash. So he rushed back to Mombasa, sorted out his problems, and went back to Tanzania. But as he was crossing the border into Tanzania, a lady immigration officer stopped him, actually removed him from the queue. You know, there were many nationals there, mostly Wazungus, tourists. He just picked him out of the queue. Yeah, uh, Probably she heard him uh, speaking on the phone and knew that this is a Kenyan. And she called him into his office and she was very cordial, so the person was relaxed. And uh, she asked him casually what he was going to do in Tanzania. He explained that he was on a holiday and that uh, he was also trying to do a market research to see and look into possibilities of opening a business in Tanzania. Suddenly, this Tanzanian immigration officer turned uh, nasty. She asked him whether he had a license to do business in Tanzania. The man was very shocked. This is a man who has had experience doing business in many countries, including countries in the West, and he found it ridiculous that an immigration officer would ask him for a business permit and he was going to do research. He, was, he had not even started the business. The immigration officer told this Kenyan that he needed a business permit in order to do any kind of research in Dar es Salaam. Let me just leave that story there because it developed into a very, very ugly uh, uh, incident. Now back to these milk traders. Now. I'm not an expert in international law, but Tanzania is a member of the East African community. Tanzania is a neighboring country to Kenya. Indeed, when Tanzanians come into Kenya, they are not harassed. But I can tell you this for a fact, because it has happened to me. When Kenyans enter Tanzania, there's a lot of hostility. Now, I'm sure most Kenyans remember the incident last year again, when... Uh, cows belonging to some Kenyan Maasai's who had uh, crossed over the border to graze their cows were impounded and auctioned. Now the Maasai issue is a bit complex because I think most of us know that Maasai's are both on the Kenyan side of the border and the Tanzanian side of the border. As far as the Ma community are concerned, there's no border. Yeah? You might have land in Tanzania Indeed, this happens to many of them. They have land in Tanzania and they also have a home in Kenya, in two different countries. Indeed, a few years ago, I witnessed Maasai crossing the border without passports. Now, I'll tell you what the concern of the Tanzanians is. It is Kenyans crossing the border into Tanzania and getting jobs there, which, which is a justified concern. I mean, uh, foreigners come into a country and getting employment and your own people don't have employment. That uh, obviously is an issue. Now, of course, it's a prerogative of a country to come up with their own policies. 
yeah, because other countries, for example, like Rwanda, yeah, have a different, more open policy. And actually, it ends up creating more employment for the locals. But Tanzanians have quite rightly chosen to be closed, a closed community, and are especially hostile to Kenyans who have had this habit of grabbing a lot of jobs in Tanzania that would have gone to Tanzanians. And according to me, that is okay. That is their country. They're supposed to pass whatever policies they see best. However, in my view, asking traders for business licenses, I think, is going too far. Harassing Kenyans who are in Tanzania, yeah, looking on at everybody, even tourists, suspiciously that they've come to get jobs that belong to Tanzanians, I believe is going too far. It's being paranoid. Indeed, Tanzania is one of the few African countries that has an immigration police. Yeah, police who are just uh, assigned only to immigration issues. Yeah, catching foreigners entering their country legally. Or catching foreigners who are breaking uh, laws in their country. Yeah, especially to do with entry. For instance, my friend uh, who crossed the border at Lunga Lunga and had that experience told me when you cross the border at Horohoro, a few kilometers into Tanzania, there's a roadblock. And this roadblock is manned by this immigration police. And they stop entire buses, yeah, and uh, what they're looking for are Kenyans entering the country without proper documentation. Now, I have a lot of respect for the Tanzanian president, John Pombe Magfuli. He has really fought corruption very aggressively. Indeed, Bwana Magfuli, His Excellency President Magfuli, reminds me very much of one of my great political heroes, the late Mwalimu Julius Kabarage Nyerere. That is a president who served this country for years and retired poor. Yeah, he was not involved in any corruption. He did not use his position to enrich himself. As far as I know, there is no other African president who can boast of the same. Yeah, so I consider Nyerere a very great man. And even if you follow his career, his thinking and his writing, um, Nyerere is a political giant. And Magufuli, in some ways, reminds me of Nyerere. However, in my view, I believe that some of the policies of this current Tanzanian president are not practical. And I can give very many examples. But those examples are none of our business because uh, Tanzania is a sovereign country. However, when some of those policies are hostile towards a neighboring country, and indeed a country that is one of the biggest investors in the Tanzanian economy, I think uh, that is going a little too far. Kenya is one of the top three investors in the Tanzanian economy. And there's something else. The fact that there have been several incidences, I mean, if this was the first, we'd just ignore it. But the fact that there have been several incidences where tensions have climbed very high at the border due to actions by the Tanzanian authorities should uh, make Kenyans sit up and pay attention. I find it a huge contradiction that uh, the government of Tanzania officially is very eagerly seeking out investors. But it is a fact that very many foreign investors have fled Tanzania. They have abandoned Tanzania. Yeah, especially since uh, uh, President John Pombe Magfuli came into power. And some of those investors are Kenyan investors. I know a few who have gone to other countries, like Rwanda. But again, that is okay, because it's a sovereign country. Yeah, maybe they have a plan. However, contradictions are not good for your neighbor. I believe it is good to be clear as to exactly what you want. If the policy, eh, Chini Amaji, is that Kenyans are not welcome to Tanzania, then the Tanzanian government should come out and say it clearly. Then we will not have incidences like that of my friend of unsuspecting Tanzanians and unsuspecting Kenyans going into Tanzania very innocently, not knowing that, uh, you know, the kind of inconveniences they're getting themselves into. Folks, the truth is I'm very protective of Tanzania. It's a country I love. It's a country I know very well. But to be very honest with you, there are very, very many times, especially in recent times, I've feared for that country. Before I go, I want to give you one classic example. You know you can have a very good idea, 
and you can have very sincere motives. However, the execution can mess you up big time. For years, I used to boast to my Kenyan friends that uh, Tanzanian cops are not corrupt, that the Tanzanian police force is one where my political lecturer would have fitted in very well. But in recent months, that has changed very dramatically, and sadly so. There's been a very serious clampdown, yeah, where you get uh, regular checks by traffic policemen, which on the surface of things is good, yeah, because Tanzanian roads are much safer than Kenya, so it's good even to enhance this further and maintain these standards. However, in my view, these checks are just too much. They are all over the country. If you travel on a road, there are several checks, several checks after every few kilometers. And what is worse, these policemen and these roadblocks, believe it or not, are now taking bribes. So my boasting about Tanzanian policemen has come to a very abrupt and rude end, which is very sad. Anyway, I believe the time has come that even as the Tanzanian government talks with the Kenyan government to try and sort out this impasse, that the government of Tanzania at the highest level comes out very clearly and tells the Kenyans, and indeed the world, what they want. And if they are not happy with their neighbors Kenya, they say exactly what they are unhappy about, about the Kenyans. Because these frequent uh, high tensions at the border which bring disruptions, affect the livelihoods of very many people. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Thank you.